Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a great day. And today I'd like to show you how to distribute an Open Frameworks application on the Mac App Store, on the iOS App Store, and on Steam for both Windows and Mac OS. So let's get started. First, you want to make sure that you downloaded the newest release. Sometimes um, you have to check out the GitHub of Open Frameworks and they might have a nightly um, build or some quick fixes you might have to do for the newest project. All right, but uh, usually this the newest version here should work. So uh, I'm currently running macOS Big Sur. So this is the most recent macOS as of the time of the video. So you want to download um, the OS X, uh, download Open Frameworks for OS X. You want to download the uh, OS X for iOS if you want to release your application on iOS. And if you want to release your application on Steam for Windows and Mac, you want to download uh, the Visual Studio version, but not on Mac, but on Windows instead. Also, you don't really need to run the Linux version if you want to distribute your game or your application on Steam, because uh, Linux, well, Steam supports uh, Linux through through some uh, Windows Wine features, so you don't really need to worry about this. All right. So I already downloaded the Open Frameworks version. And I'm going to unzip it. So I encourage to start with a clean slate when distributing. So hope this is unzipped in just a second. All right. So I'm just going to copy this over. And as you can see, I have many different versions of Open Frameworks. And it's really important you actually run the newest version of Open Frameworks when you distribute. So let's say you already wrote your application on either Windows or Mac OS. Um, I'm just going to start with a clean slate, which means I'm going to copy over the source folder and the data folder. Okay. But first, because I'm going to start with a clean slate, I have to generate a new project. So I'm going to run the project generator. All right. OK, so as always, it will ask you for the Open Frameworks path, which is just the folder. And you click on Create. And you call it Open Frameworks, or no, sorry, I call it Trap Browser, which is my game. But I'm, in this case, I'm going to call it um, Video Demo. Okay. So let me generate this. And now I can click Open in ID, and it should open directly in Xcode. And the install location is under Apps, My Apps, and here is your project. All right. So this is an empty project as soon as it opens. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update it to the newest um, version, right? But I'm only going to copy the source files and the data file, okay? And I'm going to do all the settings with you so you can also distribute your application on macOS. All right, cool. So my files look basically the same uh, with one exception. Uh, the main.cpp file has a few um, modifications, which I'm going to go over uh, later on the Windows version, okay? So let me copy the source file. So the way I like to do it is I just copy all the files in here and paste them into the clean application, right? So I'm going to open source and I'm going to copy paste them. And I'm going to replace old files. So I'm just going to close Xcode and open it again. All right, it should have the newest versions, okay? So here um, I have a macro which checks if I run this application on Mac or Windows. This is pretty important. Um, I'll get to that in a second. But um, for Windows, you probably want to use um, the following um, screen instead. And I'll go over that uh, later. But for macOS, you can just use the default application. All right. 
So, so far I updated um, the following source files, but as you can see, uh, not all the source files are in here, right? So what you want to do is you want to go here and you want to select all the source files here. So I have a few files which aren't actually source files which can get ignored, okay? So these are not important and these are not important either. I'm going to add the to-do file, okay? So just drag and drop it in here. Uh, make sure add to target is selected and create folder references. A uh, copy of items needed can be checked, but it should be in the right location. So now the files are getting added one by one. All right, so I'm going to now switch to release mode and I'm just going to try to see if the application actually runs. Alright, here's the data folder. So in the bin folder, I'm going to replace the data folder. Alright, awesome. Cool. So I had a program assertion error. So let me see what the issue is. So by default, show package contents, contents, resources. Okay. So as you can see, the data folder did not properly copy over to the resources folder. All right, so that's kind of the first issue. Um, the way I can fix this is I go here. Okay, now I need to remember this. Um, first thing you have to do is you have to go here to your project. Make sure you select the project here and make sure you're not in the project uh, tab, but you are in the targets tab. And I'm only interested in the release target. So I'm going to do everything for the release target. So you want to go here um, to the copy file section and you want to add a folder. And in this case, the folder I want to add is the data folder, right? So um, it's not in here. So let me just drag and drop it in here, add other. And I'm going to drag and drop the data folder in here. All right, open. Uh, create folder references, that's fine. Copy items if needed, that's also fine. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually copy the files. All right, um, cool. So here you go. So now if I run it again, hopefully. Okay, there's still an error. Uh, right, I only said this is the folder I want to add. But I actually want to add it to the resource folder, okay? Not to the framework folder. So let's rerun this again. All right, awesome. So this is my game, as you can see. So maybe the first thing you might notice is it's pretty pixelated, okay? So I'm going to go to exit, and I'm going to open the info.plist file, right? And here, there should be an entry for high resolution capable. If you set this to yes, uh, it will support for retina display, right? So now when you run the application, it will be smaller, <laughs> but if you add support for resizing, it should work, right? At any size, and you can just go full screen and you can go back, all right? Cool. So that's the first step. Next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the install locations and safe locations of the respective files, okay? So depending on how you compile it, you cannot actually save things to the resources folder. So if you share this application and then you actually try to save something in the resources uh, folder, this is actually not allowed with the default sandboxing macOS techniques. And under Windows, there's the same issue, right? So if you actually want to develop it in the completely correct fashion and you want to save data, what you want to do is you want to uh, find the home environment for your application. And you can do this using the following C command, okay? And uh, right now, this points to the following location. But as soon as I uh, release it, um, this location will be a different location, okay? So you will see how this how this location will change. And given, given the directory, I'd like to create a subdirectory. So, okay, maybe one thing I should mention under Windows, this, this location is percent up data percent slash trap puzzler video demo. 
And under macOS, it also has a special location depending on if you install it on a user level or for all users, okay? But I'll get to that. So the way I do this is I just have, because I disabled the data path, it by default points to the resources folder under macOS, okay? So your data folder can be referenced like this. So I have my levels in the data folder slash levels, which is here, resources, data, levels. And this is how I reference to them. And then I copy the levels over to the safe folder, to the safe location, the environment home, because I would like to store, uh, I would like to have the users create their own levels and change the levels uh, on the fly. Okay. So all you have to know is if you want to save data, you cannot do it in the data folder. You have to do it in this location. All right, so that's the next thing I wanted to point out. And that's pretty much all on the code level. So next, let's see how I can actually compile this, all right? So let's go over how to sign it. And usually there's an error. Okay, if you, if you download this app from somewhere and you can't really run it because it's by an unidentified developer. So the only way you can actually run an application from an unverified developer is if you right click and then click open and then click allow, all right? But let's actually try to uh, publish it on the App Store. So make sure you click on automatically manage signing, all right? Enable automatic. And then furthermore, you want to make sure you have your team in here, all right? So for this, you need an Apple developer account and this costs about 100 uh, francs per year. All right. So um, the signing certificate is fine. And I also want to automatically manage signing for the release and the App Store. And again, I want to use my name. Okay. So the bundle identifier, I like to just keep it the way it is, cc.openframeworks. And I'm going to go over this step by step. Okay. So after you manage signing, um, the next thing you want to do, and make sure you have uh, signed everything and not just the debug or the release or the App Store application, but all of them. So the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure, and this is, this is something that's a bug and um, it's now being fixed in the next version, but in case you're still using this version, just go to build settings and type in Qt Kit. And make sure that in the OF Core Frameworks uh, macro, that here we we don't include minus framework Qt kit, okay? Because this will, while this will runs on macOS, it will not allow you to publish the application. So um, Apple will complain. All right. So now I actually have to save it. Command S. Okay. I think this should be saved now. All right. So also what I like to do is I like to check the optimization level. And here I just like to see that the release version is in the fastest version. And sometimes the debug version is too slow for me. So I like to make it faster. O2. Okay. All right, next you probably want to have a custom icon for your application. But if you don't need this, you can skip this step. Um, I'm just going to send a template or upload a template in the description. And I can also uh, give you a link on how to generate um, these files from a, single, from a single file. But basically you want to have the same file, but in different resolutions, okay? So it looks something like this. And the JSON um, folder will reference all the icons with the different sizes. Okay, so once you have this folder, this icon set, now let's just replace the default Open Frameworks icon set. So I actually don't remember where exactly it is. So let me just find the location real quick. So I found the location. Uh, it's not here, but it's basically under libs, Open Frameworks compiled OS X. All right. And so this file actually is a .icns file which contains all these images, all right, in, 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 a, in a weird format. So once you have that file, 
just copy it over here and I'm just going to have this as the old version and rename this as a new version. So the location is, if this is your Open Frameworks location, you go to libs, Open Frameworks compiled, project OS X, and there you go. Uh, the process is different on Windows, but we'll get to that. So now if I run this application, as you can see, the icon changed. All right, so the next thing you have to do is do everything in the App Store. So that's what I'm going to do now. So connect to your App Store account, appstoreconnect.apple.com. Sign in with your Apple ID. And right, so the first thing you have to do is you have to create a new app, okay? And you can just create a macOS version only or an iOS version. You can add the iOS version later if you like, okay? So Trap Puzzler video demo. And uh, as a primary language, I'm just going to choose English. And right, so the bundle ID. Uh, so first, now you want to register a new bundle ID. So that's what I'm, what I'm going to do. And for the description and the identifier, I like to use the same uh, name. And this should be whatever name you have in here. So cc dot open frameworks dot trap other video demo. Now for some reason I cannot paste this and it lags. This happened to me multiple times. So I just click on back, I click on continue, I click on continue, and now I can paste it for some reason. I don't know why previously this didn't work, but now it works. All right. So apparently this is an invalid identifier. Uh, so it looks like I cannot use bottom slashes. All right. Okay. So. All right, so let's change the bundle identifier here and remove the bottom slash. And we want to make sure that we have the same bundle identifier down here as well under signing, release, and app store. Okay, so description, just trap puzzler, video, demo. Okay, <laughs> click on register. And so here in capabilities, you don't really need to use any of those features unless you plan to use any of those features. Mm. All right, so data protection is not really necessary. And yeah, I'll just show you how to get around all these details. Okay, cool. So I have now this new identifier, Trap Puzzler Video Demo, okay? So under bundle ID, okay, now I need to actually refresh this. Create a new app. And here is a bundle ID. All right. So next, you need the SKU, which is a unique ID for your app that is not visible on the App Store. So in the SKU, I just like to use the same as the bundle ID. Simple. And uh, user access. You can limit which users see this app in the App Store. Obviously, full access. Great. All right, so this worked. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go to product. And so now we're ready for publishing, right? You want to go to product and press clean. Next, um, you want to change the build target. Instead of my Mac, you want to change the build target to any Mac. All right. And last but not least, you want to click on Archive. All right, so here we go. And first, what you want to do is you want to validate your app. And it will just give you the most basic errors that you might have to fix. And there will be some errors. So um, I recommend just going for it. Automatically manage signing. Next, communicating with Apple. And it most likely will give you a list of errors that you have to patch. And usually it always involves your plist. So in here, you need to add more information. For example, you need to add the category of the app, which currently is not part of this plist. Okay. 
So I'm going to click on validate. App Store connection error. So there we go. The info.plist uh, must contain CF bundle short version string. All right, so let's add this string. And as the key, I'm going to use the same version as the bundle version. Now I like to use um, triple digit versions. So I'm going to use the same here. All right. And just rinse and repeat. Done. And now every time you submit something, you want to use a new version. Okay. So I just like to increase the bundle versions one by one. Click on product archive and repeat this process over and over. All right, so now we get two more errors. Um, the first one is the product archive is invalid. The info.plist must contain an LS application category type. So let's do this. Go to plus and type in LS application category type. Enter. And it will automatically change this name to app category. That's just how it works. And let's see which categories there are. And in this case, it's going to be a game, right? Uh, in fact, it's going to be a game uh, about puzzle, right? So I'm going to save this. So that's the first error. All right, the second error was about the sandboxing issue. There is no sandbox, okay? So if I remember correctly, you have to go here and make sure you're in the project under the targets, signing in capabilities, and make sure you click on capability. Now type in app sandbox. Click enter. There you go. Done. So in the sand app box, all you need is you just need to have it here. Um, if you use camera connections, you need to edit these information separately, of course. And for file access type, I just have none on all the folders, okay? So if you use a prompt where users can modify some applications, then you might want to change these permissions, but this is not what I'm going to do. Instead, uh, and I mentioned this before, the place where I store the app locations is here under get environment home. Okay, so let me do this again, right? And again, I'm going to change the version uh, in the plist from 1.10 to 1.12. And I'm always changing both versions, the bundle version and the short bundle version. I'm not sure why you need both of them, but that's just how it is. Archive. All right, let's see what the next issue might be. All right, so it was successfully validated. This doesn't mean it's full of flaws, all right? That just means you fast passed the first, um, the first hurdle. So next, what I like to do is I just like to click on select a method of distribution, App Store Connect, click on upload first. I always like to upload it first and then, so it, if you don't want to put it on the App Store and you just want to release it for other people, later on you can just go to developer ID, okay? But first I'm going to show you how to do it with the App Store. And if you have a developer license, why not put it on the App Store? All right, yes, yes. All right, click on upload. And there might be new issues coming up directly here. And if not, it will take a while until Apple actually updates your App Store Connect page. And you will receive an email on your Apple ID uh, with whether it passed and what the issues might be on the third round of checking. All right, awesome. So we're done. And what I like to do now is once it's uploaded and everything is successful. Now you might also want to just share it to other um, places, right? So if you want to share your app, say, on Steam, uh, you have to do the following thing. You have to click on Developer ID instead, and you want to upload it anyways, because you want to have the Apple Notary service uh, checking that your app is free of any vulnerabilities. If you don't do this, there might still be some issues with exporting, okay? All right, so there's a new issue. 
which says um, it must be rebuilt with support for the hardened runtime. Enable the hardened runtime capability in the project editor. Test your app, rebuild your archive, and upload your action again. All right, so let's do exactly that. All right, so I found the location. It's again under capability, and we want to add a hardened runtime, which defends your application by preventing modifications to its code. Okay, and um, it has a bunch of options. None of these are really important unless you maybe use your camera or your audio input. You want to make sure you enable these. All right, so now I'm just going to see if this runs under my normal Mac first. And there might be an error. And if you get a weird error, like the file info.plist doesn't exist, usually what happens is if you switch between App Store and the build phases, you want to clean your project. And then just run it again, and it should probably work. All right, so it works. Change back to any build. Um, I like to clean it always and archive it. But before I archive it, I should change the version again. So go back to the plist and change the version to 1.0.3. Save, clean, and OK. And I think it's best if I just show you a realistic way how this uh, uploads process works, because there are always new issues that pop up with new versions, and I hope um, showing you how the process is done will make it easier for you to publish it even on newer versions um, where I didn't make a tutorial for. All right, so again, click on validate and go through this entire process again. All right, so click on distribution, App Store Connect, upload. Lastly, again, distribute as a developer, upload so the app is notarized. All right, so now it's in notary service. So at some point, I get a notification when um, this process is done. Okay, so this usually takes maybe five, ten minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes more. I'll just leave this open until it happens. In the meantime, I want to show you that the uh, home environment that I showed you previously with the save files actually changed, right? So now this is the new home location after signing the application, okay? So if you remember correctly, I in OFApp.cpp, I had a custom home location, right? And I used a subdirectory of data. So let's see where this location leads. I'll just uh, go to Finder, go to go to folder, enter it. All right. So here we are, and this is just like percent at data percent on Windows, where the location of your levels and saves um, should be stored, and your application can modify these locations without needing any permission from Apple. So these are safe locations for you to modify. And no other app can modify those locations, which has not been approved by the App Store themselves. So this is how the sandboxing mechanism works on macOS. All right, so in the meantime, the demo was successfully notarized. So now you click on export. And let's just save it to the download folder. And bam, so after this process, uh, you should have a working application. So let's run it. And as you can see, it's all working well, just like you would expect. If you want to check out my game, make sure to uh, check out Steam or the Mac App Store. If you upload your game to Steam, um, here you have the options of supported operating systems, right? And you want to click Mac OS, and here it will ask you whether the app bundles are notarized. So if you exported it the way I did, you can uh, check this mark, right? And then all you have to do is you have to go to Steam Pipe, go to Builds, um, click on Upload Depots, 
and uh, choose choose your file. So um, the thing we just exported is under downloads is this dot app application, right? So what you want to do is you want to compress that application. And then upload it here. Okay. I'm not going to do it now, but just select it and upload it here. And you want to have different depots depending for which uh, version you use uh, for macOS or Windows. And then, um, last but not least, there's a general installation button, and there you have to use different launch options. Okay. And for the macOS version, you want to type in the following location, uh, whatever your app is called, not Trap Browser Demo or Trap Browser 5 or whatever is your name, dot apps backslash contents. So it actually uses the Windows backslash here, uh, backslash macOS, backslash whatever your app is, right? And that's the location where you, you can run your executable. And this should work out of the box after you do all this. Um, I'm going to talk about the Windows version some other time. All right. So this is the entire process of the Mac uh, store. So there's a few things you still have to do. Um, you need to wait until it says ready to distribute or upload it. And if you want to submit it on the App Store, there's just a few things you have to do. But there's other videos on it. I don't think there's anything I need to mention here. Mm, maybe one thing that's confusing is uh, this takes a while, okay? So just wait until you receive an email, which usually happens two or three hours after uploading it. And then you need to uh, select your build here. And as you can see, the build isn't actually in here. Oh, it is, okay. And it says missing compliance, okay? So here it will ask you, does your app use encryption? And if your app uses internet, it, for example, uses encryption by default. So my act mine actually doesn't, so I can just press no here. But um, yeah, this is just for exporting issues. So yeah, you go ahead, fill out all the details in here. Okay, and after you select the build, you can click Submit for Review. And this will take a while. And if the review is approved, you can put it on the App Store. But most likely it will not be approved and you need to change at least five things. <laughs> all right, so this was everything about the Mac OS version. So now I'm going to switch to the iOS version. Okay, so I just opened my iOS, Open Frameworks, and this should just work like a normal iOS application. Um, so normally you would have either a simulator, or if you plug your iPhone in, or your iPad or whatever, you can also select your device down here. All right, so, but if you want to publish it on the App Store, again, your build is should be any iOS device. And as always, what you want to do first is you want to clean your build folder. And you just need to click here somewhere and generate the assets. Uh, it, it will. Re it, I'm pretty sure there's a button for it. And then you just need to manually modify each and every one of those images with the same images or with the same tool that you did with the macOS uh, tool. Okay. Um, a further difference is under the P list is not inside the source or here, but it is actually inside of the Open Frameworks library. So you go to OFX iOS info.plist, and here's where your um, plist is with all the iOS versions. Okay. So, right. And here, um, the bundle version works a bit differently. Uh, instead, you use a dollar current project version. And you can change the current project version here under general targets version build. Okay. Furthermore, make sure you make sure you have uh, whichever iOS version works. I like to use iOS 12 or higher. Anything lower, I would not support. Um, then device orientation is pretty important. I just use portrait mode. I know there's some glitches if you rotate your your uh, iPad or your iPhone. You need to find a way to get around that, or just use one of the modes by default. That's my, my solution to this problem. Uh, you don't need to add any capabilities like sandboxing or runtime hardening for iOS. That's not necessary. Um, another important change is 
instead of uh, C++, it uses uh, Objective-C++, the .mm file. And here, it's basically the same, but there's a few differences, right? So instead of mouse X, you have touch cancel, touch double tap. So you actually need to modify your code to work for iOS, right? So you need to think about how to support multi-touch, right? If, you're, if you want to use that and uh, all of these other small features, right? And again, you, if you want to store, if you want to save something, not just use the data folder and, oh, make sure to not disable the data path. Just, just leave this empty for now. And then for iOS, just use the following char star home, get environment home, okay? And as a subdirectory, and this is very important, uh, you need to use slash library slash documents. And then if you want to add more, like slash data, you can do that, okay? But it's important to use char home and add the subdirectory slash library slash documents. That's the only place where you can store files and then load them up again under iOS, okay? And I use the same trick. I load in my files and I copy them to that location. All right, and I almost forgot to mention, um, you also load the levels directory a bit differently or your data directory because I didn't disable my data path. I don't use data slash or resources slash data slash. I just use levels and it will automatically be at the right location. And then I can just copy to and this should work. I just wanted to mention this um, in case there's any confusions. This is different under uh, iPad than under macOS, at least in my configuration. Um, the process of publishing it is the same. Make sure you have your build under any iOS device. You also probably want to make sure that you clean your build. And then um, go to product, click on archive. And the process is exactly the same. So in the video demo here, now there's a button for add iOS app. Just click on here. And now um, the iOS app uses the same uh, bundle identifier than the macOS app. So make sure to change the bundle identifier to be the correct one. So here I don't use the video demo one. So here you want to make sure you have the video demo version, okay? But for the sake of this video, I'm just not going to, I'm just going to keep it to the other version, to the one that's actually on the App Store. All right, so if it's done, again, you can validate the app, distribute the app, and then you should be done.